this game, this game, let me tell you a thing or two about this game, Sonic Forces. If you listen to a large portion of the Sonic community, then you would think that this game killed somebody, the way people talk about it. There is such a vitriolic loathing out there for Sonic Forces in particular, as opposed to any other Sonic game. And in my opinion, it is completely unwarranted. The horrible crime, the sin that Sonic Forces committed to get all of this hatred from so many people is that it's not very good, as if that's something new for the Sonic series. It's straight up bizarre, man. This game, like, traumatized people somehow. The years between Sonic Forces and Sonic Frontiers was an incredibly annoying time to be a Sonic fan, because you would just see all over the place Sonic fans wallowing in misery over the horrible state of the franchise because one mediocre Sonic game came out amongst a sea of heavily flawed, unpolished, sometimes unfinished and broken games with so many bad ideas and design decisions. Why this game? Why is this one so much worse than anything else the series has done before? My guess would be that people had high expectations for Sonic Forces, and it was a massive disappointment, but I don't really know why people would have expected so much from this game. I remember thinking vividly from the first gameplay we saw of Forces that this did not look as good as previous Sonic games, and I took note of the fact that Sonic Forces was not a full-price game. It was only $40 when it first came out. So clearly, this was a lower-budget Sonic game, and I did not go into it expecting the next gigantic Sonic Unleashed bloated, quote-unquote, ambitious game. It's possible that another contributing factor here was the dearth of Sonic games around this time, because the previous major game was Lost World, which was a Wii U exclusive that did not sell very well, so a lot of people didn't play that game. Meaning the last major Sonic experience a lot of fans had had was Generations six years prior. There was, of course, Mania, but a lot of fans don't care about classic Sonic, so for them, that didn't really count. So people were waiting so long for the next Sonic game, and here it finally is, and it's going back to the gameplay formula of colors and generations, really good Sonic games. So this is it, it's gonna be great, the next major Sonic game, and I don't know, I guess people just fell for the marketing or something. Perhaps people felt betrayed by Sonic Forces. You made us wait this long for something so mediocre, how could you do this? Hence, all the weirdness surrounding this game. But to me, it was just a game that was kind of mediocre, I had some fun with it, and then I moved on with my life. And it was so bizarre seeing nobody else doing that. If you really don't like Sonic Forces, I understand that. If you were really disappointed by Sonic Forces, I understand that. But the hate and hyperbole surrounding this game was, quite frankly, ridiculous, in my opinion. I'ma tell you right now, this is not the worst Sonic game ever made. Not by a long shot. This is better than the 8-bit Sonic games, it's better than the Storybook games, it's better than Sonic 4, it's better than the Sonic Rivals games. It's better than Sonic Generations for 3DS, and it's definitely better than both versions of Sonic Lost World. Considering that was the previous mainline Sonic game by this team, I considered Sonic Forces an improvement, a step up from where Lost World was. That said, I don't want to come off as a defender here, it's not like I love this game, not anything even close to that. I think this game has a ton of problems, and it's overall kind of mostly just a boring game, but I'm not here to exaggerate and sensationalize and make this game out to be a bigger deal than it is. So now, with all that crap out of the way, how about we start talking about the game itself, finally? And thankfully, Sonic Forces throws out the terrible, stupid, garbage gameplay of Lost World and goes back to the boost gameplay of Unleashed Colors and Generations. Sort of, but not exactly, and this is the root of a lot of the problems with Sonic Forces. Unlike all the previous Boost games, Sonic Forces is not built off of the framework created for Sonic Unleashed. 
they recreated the boost gameplay from scratch for this game out of the framework they made for Sonic Lost World. And evidently, they didn't do the best job in the world of recreating that gameplay, because this does not feel anywhere near as good as any of the previous boost games. The controls feel way, way worse. They feel really bad in this game, honestly. The boost speed is way slowed down. The way you steer yourself as you run down the paths feels very wrong and different. The physics here are weirdly, like, stiff feeling, and a bunch of the mechanics from the previous boost games are just not here when you're playing as Sonic. Can't wall jump, can't drift, can't light speed dash. And the level design here is a significant step down compared to all the previous boost games. I mean, they are still Sonic levels, and they do still have a lot of the hallmarks of Sonic levels. It still has a focus on speed running and time attacking, refining your run. Does still have multiple routes and lots of shortcuts you can take. It's all still there, but these levels are so kind of weak. They're very uninvolved. There's a lot of sections of just like running forward, not doing very much. There are occasionally some split routes and stuff, but there's a lot of it that the different paths you take, like, immediately reconnect with each other. The levels lack the kind of good pacing that you see in a lot of Sonic games, where the level will build and build and then have this big crescendo toward the end of it that makes you feel like, yeah, I finished that level. Here the levels are very short and they just kind of go until they stop and you're like, oh, that that's it? That's the whole level? All these problems result in Sonic being, in my opinion, the weakest gameplay in Sonic Forces, which is certainly a problem for a Sonic game. But it's just kind of a lesser boost gameplay. You could get this exact same experience, but significantly better in any of the previous games. And there is still some fun in these levels, I find. They're very simple, they're very short, they're kind of basic, but... Like with any Sonic game, doing some time attack and trying to optimize your routes, there's not a lot here, but there is some stuff that is kind of fun, some shortcuts to discover. And one thing that I do think is kind of cool about this game is, for some reason, the air boost is, like, fucking busted and you just go flying, which enables you to do all kinds of weird, kooky shit and invent some shortcuts that are clearly not intended, and that's kind of cool. But at the end of the day, I still think that this is fairly weak gameplay. There is some shadow levels, however, where you play through some remix levels that are much harder and more involved, and I think these are not too bad. They kind of remind me of, like, the DLC levels of Sonic Unleashed. Still much simpler and shorter than what I would want out of this kind of gameplay, but I played through Shadow's levels, and especially when you learn them and can blast through them fairly quickly, it's like, eh, it's fun. I like it. It's not terrible. I've heard many a fan wonder, why is this game like this? What happened to Sonic Team? How could they go from the greatness of Sonic Generations to this? I think it's very important to acknowledge that this game was not made by the same team that made Sonic Generations. That team is the team that also made Unleashed and 06, the ones who made the boost gameplay in the first place, but by the time of Sonic Forces, that team was dissolved. Many of the members had left Sega, or been laid off, or been folded into the other Sonic team, the one responsible for Sonic Forces, and this team had previously made Secret Rings, Black Knight, Colors, and Lost World. Which is not a very good track record. As far as I'm concerned, that's only one out of four quality Sonic games, and the rest are quite bad. Uh, and clearly the marketing team felt the same way, because they had to spin it up when Sonic Forces was coming out from the creators of Sonic Colors and Generations, which is only technically true because some people from the team who made Generations are on the team that made this game. It's very dishonest. It would have been much more accurate to say from the people that made Seeker Rings, Black Knight, and Lost World. Maybe had they done that, people would not have had such high expectations for Forces. Uh, and then you have the Avatar, which in my opinion is an incredibly bizarre thing they tried to do with this game. I know they're trying to capitalize on the whole Sonic Fan OC thing, but I find that to be a very misguided thing to do, and especially the way they went about it I think is very, very weird. 
Firstly, I find it a highly questionable choice in a series all about its super iconic and beloved characters to have the player not play as those characters and instead play as some generic nobody. But secondly, this is just a personal thing, I never did the whole Sonic OC thing despite growing up loving Sonic. I just didn't do that. Maybe it's because I was a very uncreative child. I didn't even rip stuff off like that. I didn't make a recolor of Knuckles and call that my own original Sonic character. I just didn't make any characters. I just played the games and had fun with them, and I liked the Sonic character Sonic characters. So for me, when they announced the whole make your own Sonic character thing in this game, I was not excited about that at all. I would much rather just play as the real Sonic characters. But whatever, a lot of people are into that, so they want to do it for a game. Sure, fine, but I still find the way they went about it to be very weird. But you get to make your own Sonic character, and there's a bunch of different species you can pick that all have unique little bonuses that you get. And the only one you should play as is the bird, because it gets a double jump. Uh, and the avatars play pretty much identically to Sonic, just with a couple of minor differences. They don't have the boost, but as a trade-off, they can use Wispins, which are Wisp weapons. It's a pun, you see? Ain't that clever? Uh, and each Wispin has a different way that it can attack enemies, and also a different Wisp power that it's able to use. Something I forgot to mention with Sonic's gameplay is that there are no Wisps for him in this game. You only get to use them through the Wispins as the avatar. And a lot of these Wisp powers are returning from previous games, like the Burst coming from Colors for DS, or you have the Hover. Uh, but some Wisps also have different abilities from before, like the Lightning Wisp from Lost World for 3DS. Now it gives you the Lightspeed Dash, which I guess that's why Sonic can't do it in this game. Same for Wall Jumping, Avatar gets that. Uh, they also get kind of a Drift thing that they can sort of do using the uh, Grappling Hook. Which the grappling hook is like a completely artificial, just spectacle thing. Functionally, it's exactly identical to the homing attack, just with a slight delay on it. Which makes it just feel worse. And that's a lot of how the avatar feels, is just like a worse Sonic. Because this general core gameplay is designed for the boost style, but then you don't have the boost. And so, it's kind of very awkward if you lose all your speed, then building it back up can be very clunky. Uh, that can be fixed, however, because there are other Wispins you can get that have little, like, perks and, uh, upgrades on them, and one of them gives you an instant burst of speed after stomping, and that kind of makes the Avatar feel a lot better. And it's kind of cool, you get to play levels with different Wispins, and then you can take different shortcuts, because you can only use the Wisp power that is associated with your current Wispin selection. So, it's a little bit more interesting than the Sonic gameplay here because of that. It kind of brings in a little bit of that Colors-esque gameplay, experimenting around with the different Wisp powers to see what are the better shortcuts and what is the best way to approach it. Playing the levels with the different things of what's available to you to see what's possible. Some of these Wispins kind of suck, like the cube one is terrible, just never use it. Uh, but the real crown jewel of the Wispins to me is the drill, because this thing is crazy. You charge it up, kind of like a spin dash, honestly, and then when you release it, you go so insanely, ridiculously fast. And you can use it in the air, and its Wisp power is almost like, who even cares? Just look at this. Look at how crazy and insane this is. But I'll be honest, it's kind of fun to learn how to tame this insane speed and plow through these levels really fast. It is kind of cool. Uh, you also occasionally have these levels where you play as the Avatar and Sonic together at the same time, basically giving you access to what feels like a full move set. So you get all the Avatar's abilities and the Wispins and everything, but also the boost like Sonic has. And it kind of feels like maybe this is just what the game should have been. Like this whole Avatar thing, one of the reasons it feels so weird to me is that it's just for one portion of this game. Like, okay, you want to make a Sonic game where you make your own character and uh, you make friends with all the Sonic characters. That's fine enough, and I could see how you could make that game work. You make your character and they get to know all the Sonic characters, and maybe they gain their abilities over time as you spend time with them. Kind of like a Street Fighter VI World Tour thing, if anyone's played that. That's kind of what these Wispins end up feeling like sometimes. Like, oh, you learn the light speed dash. The Hover Wisp lets you fly like tails. The uh, Drill special ability lets you go up walls. It makes you feel like you're climbing like Knuckles. If you recontextualize these things to be like you learning the abilities of the other Sonic characters, and instead you had the whole game you were playing as the Avatar, and that is the concept of the game, that would make a lot more sense to me. 
the fact that you have all these cosmetics and things you can put on your avatar and all these different wispins you can equip and multiple different copies of them with all these different perks and that's only for one third of the game and in the other portions of the game you just play as a static character with their static moveset it is really really strange from a structural perspective to me Makes me wonder if at some earlier point that was the idea behind Sonic Forces. You make your own character and you play this game as them, but then they backtracked on that because they're like, No, people want to play as Sonic in a Sonic game. I can very easily imagine something like that may have happened during this game's development. Uh, another thing I want to talk about while we're here is this game's length and level reuse, because that is certainly a problem. This game is freaking short. Including cutscenes, it is only two hours long for a base game playthrough. And I am not normally someone to complain about a game being short. I can have a game that's 20 minutes long, and as long as it's good, I'm fine with that. To me, it's not so much a problem of the length in and of itself, that I want my games to be longer to get more out of my money or whatever. I don't care about any of that stuff. What matters to me is that the game needs to be long enough to feel satisfying and feel like it fleshes out what this game can do and what it can be to a good degree, where you feel like you got a full experience out of that game. And depending on what game it is, those are going to be different lengths. For some games, that could be less than an hour long. For other games, it might be 80 hours. Whatever is the right length for that game. And Sonic Forces is an unsatisfactorily short game. It feels like this game is half, or maybe even one-third of what they wanted it to be. There are a lot of levels here, but like I said, they're incredibly short. If you could double or triple the level lengths here, I think this would be a much more satisfying experience overall. You'd feel like you'd be getting to play a good amount of game. But even on top of the fact that there's not a lot of game here, a good portion of this already very short game is reused and filler content. A number of these levels that you play as the Avatar are just reused levels from when you would play as Sonic. And then you also have the Shadow levels reusing stuff. And then you also have side levels and secret levels reusing these same things over and over. You can really tell that they were doing their best to try to squeeze as much game as they could out of the very few assets they were able to produce here. You can also see that in the new collectibles here and how they force you to play the level multiple times in order to get them. First you have to get the red rings, then you can get the number ring things, then you can get the moon rings, and there's absolutely no reason that these all couldn't be available the first time you play the level. They just gate them behind each other to make you play the game more. There's also leveling up your avatars to unlock more customization and wispins, and you have to do that for every single species, so just keep on playing levels and keep on grinding it out. Look, there's so much content in this game. Look at how many hours you can put into it. Of course, nobody wants to do that because this is all just worthless filler, and most people don't even like this game very much to begin with. So all those attempts to try to squeeze out more playtime was essentially a waste of effort. And you know what else was a waste of effort in this game? Classic Sonic Zing, but not really. This is actually my favorite part of Sonic Forces, believe it or not. I mean, it goes without saying the classic Sonic here is not even close to how good it is in the original Sonic games or Mania, which came out just a couple of months before this game, which makes for a really bad comparison. Not even anywhere close to Classic Sonic in Generations. I don't want to overstate it. It's not like I think that this is amazing gameplay here, but compared to everything else in Sonic Forces, I find Classic Sonic's gameplay to be the most enjoyable. No, of course, it does not have real 2D Classic Sonic physics, and people made a whole big stink about that when the game first came out. Look at this! Look at how terrible it is! Can you imagine someone thinking it's okay to make a 2D classic Sonic game where Sonic doesn't accelerate running downhill? Oh. I mean, I'm kinda joking there, it's not like Sonic 1 speed caps are a good thing either. But this is far from the first 2D Sonic game not to have authentic Sonic physics. Generations didn't even have that, and nobody complained back then. Again, of course, this did come out right after Mania, which was amazing and had fantastic Sonic physics, so it certainly didn't look very good. 
But on its own, in a vacuum, while it doesn't feel great, once you get a hang of Classic Sonic here, it's serviceable, in my opinion. It's certainly a lot better than the physics you get in, like, the 8-bit Sonic games or Sonic Rivals, even Sonic 4. I'll take this over all those things. No one complains this much about those having fucked up physics. Well, except for Sonic 4. But the point is the same one I've made in many of my videos talking about 2D Sonic games. Would I prefer real Sonic physics? Always, every single time, yes. But if the game doesn't have it, that is not a deal breaker for me. What matters more than anything is whether or not I find the gameplay fun, and I do think Classic Sonic here is fun. The drop dash is really enjoyable to use in this game, and these levels are by far the most active and involved levels in the whole game. They do not have giant sections of you just running forward and big set piece things where you do QTEs or anything. I forgot to mention that, but those are in this game and the other playstyles, and they suck. Don't have any of that here when you're playing as Classic Sonic. You're just playing traditional 2D Sonic levels with probably the best level design in the game. A lot more split routes here, a lot more real platforming. It's not great, but it is fun. I enjoy these levels. They're not too bad. One of the biggest complaints I always hear about Classic Sonic in this game is just the fact that he's here. He feels very shoehorned in. He's got nothing to do in the story. Which, of course, all that is true, but he's not here for story purposes. This game, it feels to me like a lot of the problems come from the direction, or rather, I should say, the lack of direction. What Sonic Forces really feels like to me is a game by people who don't know what to do. They don't know what they should be doing. They have no ideas, no vision for what to do with Sonic going forward. Their last game was very poorly received, so they're just like, we don't know. We don't know what to do next. We don't know what people are going to like. So let's just do a bunch of things that people have liked from previous Sonic games. People didn't like the gameplay we had in Lost World. They liked the boost gameplay. Okay, we'll bring back the boost gameplay. Oh, people like Sonic Colors, so they must have liked the Wisps. Let's bring those back in the form of the Wispins with the Avatar gameplay. People like Sonic Generations, so they must have liked Classic Sonic. So let's bring that back too. People like darker, more serious Sonic stories? Okay, we'll try to do something like that as well. Even the structure of this game, how you have multiple playable characters and over the course of the story you're swapping between all of them? Very similar to the structure of Sonic Adventure 2. So, oh, people like multiple different playstyles and different characters? Let's do that. But they don't like Sonic Friends because Sonic 06. So two of the characters you play as will be Sonic, and then one of them will be a non-character who half of the time you play with Sonic. I've seen so many people say that Sonic Forces was a bunch of wasted potential, and I do not agree with that in the slightest. Sonic Forces is just a hodgepodge of ideas and concepts from previous Sonic games seemingly just thrown together because, I don't know, it was a thing in a Sonic game that people liked before, so maybe they'll like it again? Maybe? I don't know. That's what this game feels like to me. It feels like a game by people that just did not know what to do. And the only new idea in this game is the whole Avatar make your own Sonic OC thing, which I got to thinking, is that supposed to be a ripoff of Splatoon? Because that had come out a couple years prior to this, and we know that this team has a habit of ripping off Nintendo games with their Sonic games. And uh, you look at those renders of like the different avatars and how they got all their different customizations and they all got their weapons, and I'm like, this is just like the shit you see in Splatoon. Was that the core idea behind this whole avatar thing? Just more fucking ripping shit off and trying to jump on bandwagons? Jesus Christ, this fucking game. Well, I have been trying to make it clear throughout this video that I don't think Sonic Forces is an awful game, and I do not hate it. I do think Sonic Forces is a pathetic game. It's like a little kid trying to copy their older sibling, just doing everything that they do and thinking that makes them as cool as their big sibling is but every attempt it makes to try to emulate better games fails spectacularly, and the game overall ends up falling on its face. And I am willing to bet that Sonic Team feels the exact same way about this game. There's no way that any developer makes a game like this and does not know that all these problems are here. They are probably very ashamed of this game. There's no way that anyone who worked on this game is proud of what they put out, except for maybe Otani with the music. 
Surely this game's development must have been a shit show. A bunch of stuff must have gone wrong. There were probably so many problems just getting this game out the door. And so by the end of it, they're like, just make something that we can sell. That's the only explanation I can think of. That's the only way I can make sense of this game taking this long to develop. And they probably knew the fans would hate it, but there was nothing they could do at that point. The game was made, it was what it was. And I will say that despite all the problems Sonic Forces has, it does not feel like a lazy, cynically thrown together cash grab. I do think that Sonic Team cares, and I do think they are trying. I can easily imagine leading up to this game's release, the team was probably thinking, God, not again, another Sonic game that's gonna ruin the series' reputation and drag the studio name through the mud, and the comparisons to Sonic Mania and Mario Odyssey were not helping. But despite how much fans hate this game, I bet you nobody hates Sonic Forces more than Sonic Team does. But personally, I do not hate Sonic Forces. I can't hate this game. It's not bad enough or soulless enough for me to hate it. I know many people will say that being middling is worse than being bad, because at least something bad you can laugh at, but I don't feel that way. I can have some fun with Sonic Forces, and I see the game for what it really is. A game with no clear vision or direction that had a ton of production problems and was made by a team that perhaps does not have the competency or the talent to achieve what they want. You'll never hear me recommend this game, you'll never hear me say that this is a great game, but I don't hate it. I don't have that kind of emotional investment in this game, I honestly just don't really care about this game that much overall. To me, it's just another Sonic game that's not very good, which there are already plenty of, and I don't sit here festering over how much I hate them, and I'm not gonna do it for Forces either. Uh, before I go, I do want to give a quick shout-out to a couple of mods that I think do a lot to help out the Sonic Forces experience. Uh, first one I want to mention is the Classic Sonic Improvement mod, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It does a lot to improve Classic Sonic. Improves the physics quite a bit, still doesn't get them anywhere close to accurate or anything, but they do feel better. It also even modifies some of the level design, and normally that's something that I'm not super into with Sonic mods, but I actually do think the modifications here do make these levels quite a bit better. And I'm very impressed by the polish here, like, none of this stuff feels like a mod, it feels like it's just part of Sonic Forces. Even the Chaos Zero boss fight they added, it feels like something that probably was cut out of the game initially. Uh, so that's a pretty cool one that I would recommend checking out. I mean, it's not gonna change your opinion about Classic Sonic in this game, but it will make it a better experience if you can tolerate it, or if you're like me and you actually like Classic Sonic here. Uh, another big one is Sonic Forces Overclocked, which kind of functions as an epilogue to Sonic Forces. This is a total conversion mod for Forces that essentially turns it into its own sequel, with extremely heavily modified level design, the 95% of which is brand new. So it's essentially a set of all new levels here, and these levels are much longer, much more active and involved, and have better level design than the original Sonic Forces does. So if you want to get a taste of what a more full version of Sonic Forces could have been, then this will give you that, and I think that it is pretty alright. It is ultimately still Sonic Forces, and it still plays like Sonic Forces, so if you don't like this game, I don't think it's going to change your mind or anything. But if you already bought Sonic Forces, and you found it to be an unsatisfying experience, then this is something that can probably give you a lot of extra value. Uh, and the last mod I want to highlight is one that's not currently done, but uh, when it is, I definitely do want to check it out. Sonic Forces Reimagined, which takes the existing, very unsatisfying and overly short levels of Sonic Forces and tries to flesh them out in an authentic feeling way. And so far, checking out the demos of it, I am quite impressed. It feels like this could have been Sonic Forces if it had some extra time, so definitely one to keep an eye on, I think. Uh, but that is it for Sonic Forces the game. All that's left now to talk about is the story, but we're gonna have to discuss that another time.